um, it's a bit more Ohm's law now. So um, we, we looked at resistance uh, earlier, and um, we said that uh, a good way of, of thinking about what resistance is, is if we relate how hard we're pushing electrons around a circuit, which is the equivalent of the voltage, to how much flow we get, which is the <coughs> So we said, you know, if we want to try and quantify this, then um, a quite intuitive way of trying to quantify um, this thing that we call resistance is to take, you know, how, how hard we're pushing the charge carries around a circuit and divide by the flow rate that we get. So um, that would give us this equation, this R, this thing we call resistance, would be the voltage divided by the current. So the voltage, how hard we're pushing electrons around a circuit, and I, the current, how much flow rate we get. So this is just saying um, for a low resistance, um, we don't have to push very hard to get uh, a high flow rate. Whereas if we've got a, a high flow rate, sorry, if we've, got, if we've got a high resistance, then we have to push very hard and still only get a small flow rate of electrons. So we can, we can plot um, current and a voltage on a graph. Right, so if we've got some circuit or some device and we apply a voltage to it and then uh, plot what current we get. So if we, we start at like some negative voltage and um, plot the current and then gradually go towards zero voltage. Once we get to zero, the current should be zero. Right? and then go to more, a higher voltage, then we get a positive current. And the, the slope of this graph that we get, if we, if we plotted that graph, that is the resistance. So if we've got a steep gradient, that, that means we've got a, a low resistance, and then we've got a relatively small voltage giving a relatively high current. And there's, there's not much resistance to the flow of these charge carriers. Right, but, but this only holds, this is only a straight line given this equation holds. Right? Mm -hmm. So if there's any bends or curves in that line, then we've no longer got this, this gradient that is this equal B over I. B is no longer constantly proportional to the I. So on this straight line, we could pick any point we like on that line, divide the voltage by the current, and we get exactly the same resistance value. Right? So that's, that's what that straight line means on that graph. So similarly, if we had a high resistance, and we um, plotted the, the current against the voltage we were applying, then you know, we'd start, start off, say, at a negative voltage here, and get a relatively small current flowing, negative current flowing, and we start going towards zero voltage. Again, we'd expect zero current and zero voltage applied. And then as we increase the voltage, again, we get a small um, positive current. And then this is what we expect for a high resistance. And again, we pick any point along that line, divide the voltage by the current, we get exactly the same resistance. And so. So any voltage or current measurement will always give you the same resistance value from this equation, which we call Ohm's law. So um, an important point to make about Ohm's law is that it is distinctive from most other laws you come across in physics in that it's empirical. And it, it doesn't have a microscopic basis. So most other laws in physics start off with some microscopic um, phenomenon, like saying, okay, what happens when 
uh, these atoms bump into each other and then scale that up to something large scale. Right, this, this isn't how we get Ohm's law. So we, we don't think about what's happening to um, an electron as it's accelerated by a voltage and then bumps into an atom and then has to accelerate again. And we could in theory do that, um, but there's so many phenomena that can happen that it, it gets quite complicated. And this is a law that was just derived from observations. So it was just derived from someone observing, okay, when we apply a voltage to a circuit, we get a current, and most of the time, it's linear. Right, and this, we get this, this straight line on a, on a graph, we graph voltage against current. So as long as we get this straight line, then we know that Ohm's law holds. We call this an, an ohmic resistor. We get a straight line on an IV plot. So we don't always get a straight line. So um, we could have a device or a circuit where we don't get a straight line. And you can see, you can imagine here, you know, if picking a point here and getting the resistance would give me a different number to picking a point, say, there. So this is non-ohmic, right? because Ohm's law doesn't hold. We don't get the same resistance calculated. And this could be caused by a whole load of different phenomena. It could mean that we get this deviation from the straight line. Like we could, for example, have a um, very thin layer of insulator it might give you a graph shaped like that, where you have to apply a very big voltage to get the electrons to jump over this insulating barrier that you've got in a circuit. Um, and it could go, I mean, the shape could be different to that. We don't need a shape like that. We could have um, monomic conduction looking like this, for example. Um, but as long as it's not a straight line, then we call that monomic. But for um, everything we're going to look at in this module, we're going to assume what we're looking at is ohmic. So it follows Ohm's law, and we get a straight line on the Um, a nice visual mnemonic for remembering this, if you're having trouble remembering this and rearranging the equation around to get um, I in terms of V and R, um, etc. So if you just write out V, I and R in a triangle like this, then if you want voltage, that's current time resistance. If you want resistance, that's voltage divided by current. And if you want current, that's voltage divided by resistance. Or if you just remember R equals V over I and just rearrange that in your head, uh, whichever way you want to do it.